Hey guys, Aaron here. Welcome back to the channel. I got my buddy Will over here again. Today we're gonna show you how to change a wheel bearing of a 2006 Porsche Cayman S. All right guys, this is my buddy Will. Say hey, Will. Hey, how's it going guys? All right, so today he's gonna be helping me. All right, one more thing before you get started. We did put the bearing in the freezer to help it uh, shrink up a little bit and be easier to reinstall, so. At the beginning of your project, you might want to go ahead and do that. So first step of replacing these things is obviously removing the wheel. So we're just going to uh, loosen our lugs, or in my case, the nuts from the wheel studs, and get the wheel off. All right, I put the key in the ignition so that our steering wheel will be unlocked. All right, wheel spacer off. All right, so now with the wheel unlocked, you can uh, rotate this thing around. We're going to remove the caliper. It is held on by these two really big bolts. They are T55s, and they are stretch bolts. So if you're going to do this job or anytime you remove this, go ahead and order two more of these because they're one-time use bolts. That was a trip to AutoZone to pick up that. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably held on snug by the brake pads. sensor to give us uh, enough room with that cable. So we may remove the 10 millimeter that holds the brake on, intermediate line. Yes. To get that out of the way as well. Yeah, so we're just gonna remove this uh, 10 millimeter here to get this bracket off. All right, so you can use a uh, cool fancy hook like Will has, or I just usually go to get a zip tie way. And, uh, <laughs> zip tie them up there somewhere. It's much more professional. <laughs> I will. That is a big nut. What, uh, what size is that guy? This is going to be, I believe, a 32. 32. 32 millimeters. All right. I'm gonna hope we have enough to take it off. All right, and these axle nuts are also one-time use, correct? Oops, knocking stuff over. <laughs> All right, so these axle nuts are also one-time use. Is that right? Can yeah, I take typically them? you don't want to reuse those. You'll just buy another one for the cost of an axle nut. Why not? Just like the bolts for the caliper. This one is does look different than the new one that we bought. Yeah, so here's the one we took off. This is the replacement one, so. Weight savings, that's what I'm seeing. <laughs> a Phillips. No, I do not. That's one thing I don't have. There's a mallet. A little uh, tasty, tasty brake dust. A little track evidence. <laughs> Ta-da! Look, we're halfway done. There's a captive plate that holds the bearing inside of the knuckle, and there, I believe there are four bolts. Yes, I see them. And we'll need to loosen those so that when we use, we're going to use a slide hammer to pull. And as we pull, we're going to try to remove the hub out before we remove the bearing. All right, everything at once, because the other option is to remove the whole wheel carrier and use a press to press it out. Uh, that's actually what the manual shows. So I did find this job in the actual Porsche manual. Um, if you guys want to get a copy of this, I have a link to where you can buy them in the description, but it goes through and lists the Porsche tools to use. Uh, but one of the really good things is it gives you all of the torque specs for everything as well. Some diagrams of how things fit together. So as you can see, that's our big wheel carrier. This is the bearing that we're trying to get rid of. That's the plate that has the four bolts in it. And then that's our hub. So we're gonna go ahead and um, do it a little differently than they do it here, just because uh, I love their step one. Let me get to it. Step one, take off the brake cover plate on the wheel bearing housing. 
So, <laughs> uh, yeah, step one, look, they already have everything out. So, um, we're gonna go do it a little bit differently. We're gonna try to do it with the uh, wheel carrier still in the car, so uh, stay tuned. And as a disclaimer, this is the first time that we have ever done this on this car or a car similar to it. So uh, if you guys have any better procedures or tips for us, please leave them in the comments so anybody else coming along doing this job next can benefit from that. It is 13, it's not a 12. 13 millimeters, all right, very good. So we obviously won't be able to take them all the way out because it's uh, like a loosen and pull it out some and then loosen and then pull it out some as you go. Kind as we remove the, the actual hub, uh -huh. as this, this pulls away from the carrier, uh -huh. then the bolts can be fully removed that are threaded inside as we remove it. So I'm guessing I'm not going to get to use my um, press. Like, yeah. We well, always want to buy brand case, new tools. In case of emergency, we'll have it. In case of emergencies, that's right. <laughs> Sitting over here so pretty and wanting, wanting to be used. All right, putting on tool number one. What's this tool called? It's a slide hammer. This is the plate using the studs that are already on the car. Some old wheel nuts. We'll thread in the slide hammer. All right, and if people don't have uh, uh, these bolts, they can just actually use their lugs, right? And That's correct. Go right in there. So, slide hammer. So, uh, upcoming Amazon purchase. So <laughs> I can see for myself here. Everybody needs a slide hammer. If you use it once, it's, it's been well worth buying. <laughs> More loosening. So we're loosening them as far as they go, I guess. Correct. Up until the back of the plate. Right. Or the hub. And full disclosure, this might be why they made this where you have to, or they make it where you need to pull the, the hole upright, but we're trying to cheat it. <laughs> While still performing the same job. And if the worst thing happens is you damage the bearing, well, that's okay. So we're already replacing the bag. <laughs> but you can already tell down here, if you look at the bottom, you can already see the plate is, is loose. Yes. So it's already moving. My concern is that I don't want to I don't want to mess up the threads where those those, those plates go on, mm -hmm. and so that's why I'm not just completely holding it there and and driving it. Gotcha. We definitely loosened it. It's just a matter of getting it where the, these bolts can clear. Mm -hmm. On your diagram, does it show you how long those bolts are? All right, so originally we thought about loosening these as we were using a slide hammer to try to pull the plate and this out at the same time, but we realized that the uh, bolts are bottoming out in the back of this now, and that is not an option, so. but we have the jaw puller to pull that right off. And then we'll inspect the hub surface. We can pull this plate off now. There's that, there's the inner. So it was pulling the, it was, it started pulling the bearing, which is what we were hoping for. It just didn't, it wasn't able to pull it. All the way out, because yeah. we couldn't get that plate all the way off. Correct. We, the, the hope was because the, these are uh, a little more than an inch long, 30, 35 millimeters long. We hope we could back those out as we were pulling the hub and pull Hopefully the whole bearing out, but 
We weren't able to do that, so we pulled the hub off. The outer race will still have to separate with a, with a jaw puller. Oh. We'll remove this plate, pull this rear shaft out, and then pull the bearing with a press tool from the rear forward, and then we'll put the new bearing in once we clean everything up. Cool. So, remove this plate? Yes. I got that. You take a break. <laughs> that was a lot of work. Oh, wow. Yeah, these are a lot longer than uh, yeah, right. I thought they were going to be. That's a good two inches. You can leave, have a note that people are telling If you ever get rid of your old old studs, keep a few of them. Because you know, you're not using, you're not ruining your new studs. That's right. All right, we got the plate off. If you wanted to know what the inside of the bearing looks like, there it is. <laughs> So what we're looking for are scoring marks on this hub surface. This is the inner part of the outer part of the race and the seal. We're gonna be replacing that. Once we pull that off, we can inspect this, clean it all up. And if there's scoring marks, we have a hub we can replace it with. Otherwise, we'll use this, press the new bearing in, and this hub will go back into service. So this is just uh, two jaw puller. Two jaw puller, use the same slide hammer. And, and if you don't own these things, almost all um, automotive parts stores, you can borrow them for free. But there's nothing like having them on hand already. Right. Once you get everything tight, sometimes you have to use a zip tie to hold these jaws from sliding. Uh, yeah. That's a good pro tip. All right, we got our little puller <laughs> on here. <laughs> A nice custom plate, and uh, we're gonna try to get this thing separated. Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully, if it pulls the seal, it'll start to move the race. But unfortunately, so that's what we don't care about. <laughs> the race <laughs> is what we need to get behind. So if we can get something to. Hold on to it. So this is where on BMWs a lot of times I can go through from the front side and, and pop this, uh -huh. start to push it. As soon as you start to push it, then it will it'll pop free. So this part is coming out, this part is not. This and this are the same part. This outer yes. piece is the only part that's it's just a press fit. I uh, gotcha. And these jaws are not sharp and don't dig in to separate the, the outer race from the, yeah. Oh yeah, they're like hooked. We can try it right there. That's just to see if we can get a, get a bite on that. As soon as it starts to move, then we can put these behind the lower part of the outer race. Yes, all right, so now I understand what this picture is. So this tool is squeezing at the base of this thing here. And then uh, once you have it separated, then you can use the puller to pull it off. So we were trying to cheat and do it all with the puller, but um, yeah, there's a reason for that tool. All right, option number two, without that tool, we're gonna give this a shot. So we're gonna heat up the outer race here to help it expand a little bit. Take our chisel, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, <laughs> put it in here and whack it with a hammer. So let's see what happens. All right, step one, secure with vice. And uh, of course, this is gonna be hot, so don't touch this after you're heating it with that. Some nice gloves. Fire. All out stale is fire. Exactly what we got here. Right, it's a precise 120 feet. No, 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 no. Have to hold it. She's inching.
Safety third around here. All right, so yes, that was success. And uh, before you guys complain too much, I have a brand new hub right there that we could use. But for you guys, we're going through this <laughs> to show you. Or use this if you don't, if you don't have uh, the cool tool that they have. Like we don't, um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna buy one of those tools just so it's easy next time. And uh, I'll put a link to all the stuff that I used or should be using in the description. Yes, while still holding, let's try this again. I may need your help holding yep. that there. It's a lot easier to film when I'm not doing the work, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> This bar I'm holding is already getting warm. <laughs> oh, I see why you want a cup now. <laughs> Has something to run into. <laughs> it's not going to work very well in just a second. There we go. <laughs> warm. <laughs> Most of the way there. <laughs> we're still lined up. Yeah, we're still lined up. All right, one more Frankenstein piece here. 30 millimeter socket between our plate. Oh, look at it sliding right over that 30 millimeter socket. Yes. It's a thing of beauty. This is a track repair, not a track. <laughs> yeah. uh, engineering at its finest. Yes. All right, so it doesn't look like I actually need a hub. I think it looks nice and smooth. Splines are still good. We'll get it cleaned up, let it cool down. Very hot. All right, we're just gonna pull off this dust shield here, 310 millimeters. Sensor bracket. <laughs> harder now? Without well, we, we, have no, we have no brake, it's a little bit harder to turn. <laughs> I think we're going to still loosen this. I think we're going to loosen this nut on this side. That allows the slip for the coilover. We'll pull that down to give us access to push this stub shaft. From the back side and then we're gonna we're gonna pull the bearing out so if you had a skinnier skinny enough puller you could put it in there reverse and pull it out you think there's a chance you could you would still have to then contend with this as you're inserting the new bearing yeah the way we're going to do it is it takes a little bit more time but it makes things a little bit easier to get to as we're taking out and putting the new bearing in makes sense to me oh 18 millimeter look at that so let's see if this is also an 18. Here's a learning experience. I don't have a thin enough wrench to get on the uh, nut on the inside, so we're gonna measure it. Some calipers. It says 17. Take that slop away. Let's just say it's 17. All right, so we need a 17 millimeter that's thin enough, so we're gonna uh, grind down a 17 millimeter. It's like the 4th of July. All right, success. Yep, that's it. Boop, boop. Beep, boop, boop. I'll have to take this other one loose, it looks like, to get the... It's got to pull away. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, what's going to make sense is to pull that out to allow you to get that get away. Slide. All right, the back side is a 16 millimeter. The issue here is that 
That's not a 17. <laughs> it's not. And I can't see the flat, if there's flats on this. More crafty solutions. <laughs> Using this to put a little uh, weight under our bar here so that we can have some tension on this to get the nut off. Not enough tension yet. There it is now. Hey. to allow this to come out. Nice. That's what I wanted to see. It's loose. A little give. Oh, did you see that? Doesn't work soon, I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> but you're so close. <laughs> it just doesn't work, I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Alright, I'll hold on it while you hammer has it. <laughs> Alright, let me hold that pull down. Sure. Yep. Do you trust me? <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> You have to uh, pull it down exactly that much. <laughs> All right, we got the car back up. Now we're going to try to get this. You can see you can see the back side of the bearing has started to fail. It's got some some dried grease and such. Uh, oh yeah, see that. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we remove the speed sensor. Oh uh, yeah, that's what that thing at the top is there. Yes, otherwise we will be buying a new speed sensor. Yes, and they uh, did mention that the back of these are magnetic on these bearings, so the magnetic side has to go to interact with that wheel speed sensor. Right. And I guess that's what sticks through the top of the uh, wheel carrier here, huh? That's correct. And that's what one of the sides that plugs into that electrical connector on the other side is your brake pad wear sensor. It's just a little uh, five millimeter uh, hex head screw. Probably hasn't been out yeah, ever in about 16 years. <laughs> so we will coax it out very gently. There you go. And that's what it looks like if you need to replace it. So what we do now is you find the correct backside of the bearing. It's, you want something that's just, just big enough to go through the bore of this upright, but it's not gonna make contact with it. So when you're pulling, you're pulling the entire bearing through. Right. Yep. So we stick this back there, we run this with a bearing washer through, a captive nut on the backside, you tighten them, and then you can spin this. As it tightens, you're holding the back nut turning this and it's drawing the bearing into this cup here. Yes. Pull the bearing in. Pulls it straight in. 
So what you're telling me is we're still not going to use my press. We're doing our, we're doing our <laughs> best not to have to use your, your new toy. How's oh, that? God. Okay, fine. <laughs> we'll find a little uh, Petit Le Mans in the background here. Why not watch the last race of the season? Shocking our way a little bit again now. Yeah, just touch. We'll get out of the way so we can get this captive nut on the backside. Uh, let's see. Would you take that mm -hmm. and run this through? Through? That's all right. Okay. We may have to use an extra piece here because we're getting close to touching on the, the coilover and we're trying to stay away from that. All right, you may hang on this thing again. Probably going to have to do something a little bit on that. Okay. So now we need to we need to hit it down just a little bit more. Alright. Ready? Yep. Okay, now I need to get Yep. <laughs> 24. 24. And on the back side. Uh, another. That'll be 24. Oh no, it's bigger than that, but I've got a, an adjustable. on the stud so you don't take that in the face. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna be it's, not, it's gonna it's gonna be unkind trying to come out. Hold that. pull down on this a little bit it's 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 not binding uh -huh. but we need this cup has uh -huh. to be on the outside of the bearing uh -huh. and I don't want to need to loosen just a touch It's already started to move. So uh, I'm gonna hold this. If you just use your hand and tighten that back up. Other way. <laughs> oh, tight. Oh, tight. Ready, tight. A little bit more. All right. Make sure I'm not, I don't wanna rub the bottom of that. Cool over screw. Yeah. I have to pull it down just a touch on this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit it with a hammer. Yep. One quick time. You ready? I'll hold the edge. There we yep. go. Yep. All right. I'm gonna keep pulling down. Got it. No, hold on a second. It, it's still touching, just barely. All right. You got it. I got the edge. Okay. All right. Ready? Yep. Yes, yeah. that's, that's closer. All right, we're off that. I'm gonna hold this. Yep. You just tighten up on that. On that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that bearing's almost out. It's just yeah. I'm I'm trying to stop it from hitting the bottom of this. All right, take a break. Let me go grab that pizza. All right, right here. Yep. Yep. Ready? Yep. Right there. Okay. All right. Oh, oh mother. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 
It is. Ah, yes. It is. Success. Oh. Look, we caught us a bearing. All right, so this is the thing we pulled out. this thing up a little bit. Just a little bit of mating surface. Take some brake clean, wipe out the, the bore, and make sure she's ready to go. All right, shiny clean. All right, so we're gonna take a little bit of this white lithium <laughs> grease, just a hair, and uh, spray it in here. Not because the bearing is gonna spin with it, but just to press the bearing in, help it ease its way in there a little bit. Uh, one thing you can do is heat this housing too to expand it to make it bigger, but we want the other easier way and froze the bearing so the bearing will be smaller. Now they actually make a wheel bearing grease that you should use, but I don't have any of that, so we went this way. Frosty bearing with the Wagyu. All right, here is the wheel bearing I'm using. I'll put a link to this in the description. All right, little comparison here. Yeah, this one looks nicer. And the black side is the magnetic side. So red faces out. Ooh, it's getting nicey. Just tapping it on gently so it'll stay in place, but so that it's nice and even, straight in. Sticking the back piece in here so that it is larger than the opening so that the front plate will squeeze this in. Bolt through the opening. Thread it into the plate. If you hold that, I'm gonna hit this and come down just a touch more. Alright, we're gonna whack it, lower it some more. Fuel go on to that and hold. And you tighten to draw it in. Uh, no, we're good. And we're just gonna unthread this. Pull it back out, I'm ready to put the hub in. All right. All right, we're gonna put this back on. Uh, it's got three dimples. So here, here, and here. This is for the uh, right front of the car. Um, so make sure you line those up correctly. Torque spec for these are 10 Newton meters or seven and a half foot pounds. And again, they are 13 millimeter. All right, brake dust shield back on. We got a little spliny guy back in there after some pulling that down and whacking again. So it's got to go quite a, full, quite a ways in before it even makes contact with these splines here. Yes. So we want to begin to pull this in like this. Uh -huh. Okay, so to catch you up, I was hanging on it while Will whacked it back down. And then we finally got smart enough to uh, put the bolt back in it. So just the top one. And uh, it is holding it separated for us. So we don't have to, hopefully, if it stays, we won't have to keep lowering it. All right, so this thing is actually a hub installer. Correct. Yeah, very nice. Okay. Here we are. We have the uh, hub started a little bit. So it's uh, in a little bit. Okay, so what we got now is the hub is loosely in place. We're gonna draw the hub in along with the stub shaft. We're gonna do that and we're gonna pull them in together and then we're gonna seat the splines so that everything talks and jives correctly. The way we're gonna do this is the stub shaft is already in. We're gonna take a hub, basically a hub CV puller. We thread this onto the end of the, what I'm calling the stub shaft. Okay, we take this and we thread it through. We draw this into the threaded piece here until it bottoms out. And I'm holding the little uh, stubby shaft here. We run this up to the end of the hub. 
tighten this bearing washer against here. Take a 24 ratcheting and a 15. You hold this and you rotate this and tighten. What you're doing is you're actually compressing and holding the stub shaft in place and you're drawing the hub closer to it so that they're mating together and that will give us the, the threads we need in order to put the axle nut on and tighten everything down. Yes. One thing I want to check is this back surface against the bearing. You want it to be close. You don't want it to be touching, touching or compressing. I guess that would create a lot of heat, would it? That would create, that would create some heat. <laughs> so yeah, we just discovered that those lines they barely overlap. I was expecting that uh, that little shaft the splines on it to go all the way through the ones in the hub but I mean it was probably like two or three millimeters that it actually uh, came in contact with. So I don't know if you can see down there but the splines there's a big uh, gap between the splines on the shaft and the splines in this hub. All right, we loosen that back up. Now we're just gonna raise this so that it's all the way back up in our shock mount. It fully seats here. All right. Now we can reinstall the sway bar end link, tighten both sides back to spec. Get ready to clean the, the hub face up, axle nut, brake caliper, torque everything down. And don't forget to put your uh, wheel speed sensor back in there, 10 millimeter. Put your brackets back on. I'm gonna clean everything up on the hub face because we have a wheel spacer you run on your wheels. Yes. Clean this up. We've already cleaned the mounting surfaces for the caliper to the spindle. We're going to attach the sway bar end link and get it snug. We'll finish tightening that once everything else is back in place. Nut, we're starting to put that back on. It's 360 foot pounds is the torque for this thing, which is insane. So. We're gonna figure something out because my torque wrench goes up to 125 foot-pounds. These two bolts uh, are 63 foot-pounds. All right, so this one is also 63 foot-pounds. All right, and our bottom one seems to be 48 foot-pounds. And again, 16 millimeter socket. Held up. With a little pressure so it won't spin. So everything's tight. All that's left is the center hub nut. We're going to tighten it to 125 foot-pounds while Aaron holds the brake. We'll drop it down, we'll put the wheel on, torque the wheel to spec, and then we'll finish tightening that to 360 foot-pounds. All right, highly mathematical formula here. We have the nut on here. We have a two-foot breaker bar. So we want 360 foot-pounds on it. So according to uh, the math, I think if you were one foot away, you would need 360 pounds on it. So if we are two feet away, we should need half of that. Mm -hmm. So I am almost uh, a little more than one half of 360 pounds. So I'm just going to stand on the end of this and... Uh, torque it down. So let me just start by putting some weight on it and we're going to torque it. It's pretty easy so far. So readjust. All right, and I'm just going to keep doing this until I can get all my weight on it and it doesn't move anymore. All right, that was fun. I wasn't filming it, but I was standing on it uh, out here with no weight supporting on the car, and it finally stopped. Yes. Yeah. That is nope, dirty. No more, no more wobble wobble. Oh, so much better. All right, so that's it, guys. Thanks so much, Will. Couldn't have done this without you. Appreciate it. Uh, so everybody, please... <laughs> 
Give the video a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Go check out Total Motorsports too while you're at it. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video.